What about the, the guys there that, that, and the girls that claim that you are God? I am not. I believe I'm God. Okay. I do. I believe that I'm God. I believe we're God. I believe everything is connected. I believe that you're God. I believe that the way I treat you is how, how I treat God. I believe you don't treat God. We don't praise an invisible God. We praise each other. The way I treat you is how I treat God. I don't put God in my mind. I put God in you. And I love you as I love God. And my relationship with you is my relationship with God. We're God. We're all one. We're one earth, one source. We're all in the same here on this one rock in the middle of nowhere. And then flying into the, into the dimensions of the, the abyss of darkness. We're all on this one rock together. And we got to get along. This is what I'm teaching. We can't keep fighting. The right people don't want to hear this. They don't. But I, I've been breaking through. I've been breaking through. See that? All that's happening right now, that's going to be on the news. That's going to put my name on the news. And we're like, what on the news? So I'm, all, I'm looking at this like, oh, okay, cool, this is good, this is what I need. I need press to get people to listen to me. Because they keep shaking me as a joke. I'm telling the mathematics of the universe. I'm saying, listen, we need to eat this food. We need to get this much sunlight. We need to get out of the hood, put the guns away. This is what we need to do. Because we keep ending up behind bars. So we have to live two of the lane. And this is my message to people. That is the defendant. In his police interview, who is this guy? What is this case? It's out of Georgia, and that is Eligio Bishop. Take a look. He is a leader of this group, uh, Carbon Nation. Is it a religion? Is it a cult? Uh, I don't know. I guess the jury will answer that question at this trial. But he's accused of sexual assault and, and rape. So what exactly is going on in his world? What, what is going on in his relationship with these women who are around him. One of those women is an accuser and is an alleged victim and testified today. You will hear her testimony. You won't see her and we won't say her name, but you can hear some of the allegations. And as, as you listen, as we listen, uh, the question for this jury is going to be is, was she coerced? Was she forced? Was she trapped? Um, was she sexually assaulted? Let's listen. Way before you come to carbonation, there's rules. So like, the rule is you have to get rid of all your stuff. You have to change your name. Those are non-negotiable. When you get there, you have to put all of your financial belongings into what we would call a pot, where we would pull resources from the group. And we would use these resources to feed ourselves, travel, etc. If you didn't give your documentation, you were like verbally abused in amongst the circle. Like they would make, you know, like have a meeting. We would call them meetings. Kind of like what was going on right now, except if you were the victim, you we would be like, why aren't you putting your money? Are you for it? Are you, you know, and then it would be like verbal abuse. And so that was a rule. Another rule was that we couldn't use the bathroom. We had to use the bathroom a certain way. Um, at one point in time, and because things progressed, it, it, it didn't keep happening, but it actually was, was a rule for us not to wear shirts. Like women couldn't wear shirts at one point in time. So we started putting leaves on our nipples, you know, going live. Um, and and other, other things that I wouldn't consider quote unquote rules, but were non-negotiable, things in the in the group was that every woman had to have sex with nature boy or or some, have some type of sexual fantasy with him and a lot of times when that would happen it would be forced and non-consensual because that's it was not negotiable for anybody there when i chose to be polygamous we instantly was like monogamous so when we were monogamous, he was doing the whole love bombing thing. Like, I really love you. I really want to be with you. You make me so happy. I really see you as the only woman in my life. I want you to have my children. You know, everything a woman want to hear. So, eventually, um, I got pregnant. And when I got pregnant, that's when the abuse started. And he really started getting abusive with me. And then later down the line, he had admitted to me 
um, that he couldn't wait to get me pregnant and his goal was to get me pregnant so that he can do whatever he wants so that I wouldn't uh, leave him. So me getting pregnant was his way of trapping me. All right, let's bring in our think tank on this. So, so Darnell, I'm listening to this testimony. This is one of the accusers. The way she described the coercion that it was non-consensual is that it was non-negotiable. As a member of this, if we want to call it a cult, we want to call it a congregation, whatever you want to call it, to be a member is non-negotiable. You need to have some form of sexual contact with this um, LGO Bishop nature boy in this carbon nation. Your thoughts, Darnell, is, is, this, is this sexual assault? Is this non-consensual? I, I, I just can't, I can't take this case seriously. It's like, is this the R. Kelly trial all over again? Is this Atlanta Housewives, maybe the show? Wait, R. Kelly got um, convicted, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... Okay, you know, I mean, so was, that was a crime. Yeah. So... I, I just can't... I mean, you know, but there was underage kids. That that was really the right, main these are thing, adults. He, these are adults. I, don't, I haven't heard an allegation yet about someone being I, underage. Exactly. So these are adults, and she's saying it's non-negotiable. Most relationships aren't really negotiable. It's normally the woman who was holding you hostage. Um, but, <laughs> I, you know, she could have left if she wanted to. I, I, you know, I, you know, I haven't heard anything extraordinary here except the fact that she thought, you know, she's going to have a kid, she's going to be in love, she's going to be monogamous. It's like any other relationship. It didn't work. And um, she said a lot of times the sex was, was, wasn't was voluntary. But this is going to be hard for a jury to, to wrap their, their heads around. They're going to be saying, is she crazy? Is he crazy? You know, uh, this is not a Koresh, David Koresh-type situation. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's everything from the original Koresh is, is the knockoff. This is the knockoff. And um, it's going to be a hard thing for the jury to find that uh, she was coerced here. She could have left. Jennifer Brandt, um, was this consensual, non-consensual? What are your thoughts about trying to figure out what was going on here in this carbon nation? Well, first, Vinny, I, I have to say I'm worried about Darnell and his relationships because if he thinks they're all <laughs> non-negotiable, that's a problem right there. But regardless... As in this case, I mean, if it's rape, it's rape. If it's not, if she doesn't agree, um, and she, it's he's forcing himself upon her, I would call that rape. Uh, whether she's a young woman, or older woman. Um, well, let me he, let me ask you. It sounded if, like it was consensual. Right. Well, she's saying non-negotiable. So if the if the negotiation is in the morning, you have to engage in sex with me, or you're out of the group. Is is that? If that if that's well, that to the extent that of the, may not be. that right, may not right. be, but so if, it's got to be something more. But if, he, if he's forcing himself upon her, that is, you know what I mean. So it's a question of what, what was he actually doing. Um, it does sound like a cult. I mean, these people were giving up all their money. They were giving up all their freedom to sort of um, go along with this group. And and could they have left? I don't know. That's a question. I mean, once he has all their yes. financial finances and you know. He, they're sort of uh, stuck there. I don't know how, how easily it would have been for them to leave. But certainly if he's forcing himself on them, uh, I think that's, that's rape. So we'll have to see what unfolds. Al, where do you see the line here between consent and non-consensual? Well, sorry, but I, mean, I was just writing this down to myself. Note to self, got to get me a cult. All right, so <laughs> taking a look at this situation, okay. Um, well, first of all, there's only one true nature boy, and that's Ric Flair. That's the first thing. Carbon Nation is a stupid name for a cult. That's the second thing. And if you're taking a look at it from the standpoint of what happened here, I mean, it does sound more sour grapes than it sounds like, like, like a, a ridiculous. I mean, in you know, in certain respects, Darnell is correct that it's a little ridiculous that they're going forward to this level. I mean, people don't like cults. People don't enjoy, like to have these kind of situations. And this guy is such a freak show that he's going to get up there and just if they play the tapes from, you know, the, what he said to the police department, that I'm God, you're God, we're God, around we see God, God's here, God's there. I mean, you know, th this is the kind of freak that a jury is just going to have a, a, a real fun time just convicting, just based on that. And a guy like this will take the stand because 
there's no way he's he thinks he can convert anyone and everyone. This is his so, moment. You know, I, Darnell, did you hear the headline out of there? I, I wrote it down. Darnell is correct. Al said that. <laughs> I did like it. And, and the only way for Al to get a Al to get a date is to get a to get a cult. Oh, oh right. I am getting a cult fan. I am gonna get called, but I'm gonna be known as Sensation Al. There you go. That'll be my name. And then it'll be it's gonna be the Humpty Hump Nation. That'll be the name of my cult. I, I lost control. I'm sorry for